How's it going guys? I'm your host Corban Gaming. Welcome back to another Dragon Faber video. So today is the first week of August, but instead of a in challenge, we have a reimagined release because Dove or Tomix is actually taking a break this week. So Verly decided to do uh, the reimagined release instead. Also because we didn't have uh, one for the last week of July, so they are actually pushing it to this week. Okay, so. Let's take a look at the design notes to see what are the changes, okay? So this month we have new art and organization for the town of Sulan Eskar and Guardian and Pyromancer revamps, okay? So first up, Sulan Eskar has had an overhaul. Dracelix has created new art for the entire town and the Vin. Head over to check out their new Swarm Free base. We wanted to reimagine the quest rescue of Eleni this week as well, but unfortunately with Dove on break, the quest turned out to require a bit more work than we had hands for. Also, please note that this is not the final update to the town of Sulan Eskar. We have many ideas for additional new dialogues and interactions. Alright, so I assume they just uh, updated the art. I don't know if they actually updated any of the uh, ooh, the dialogue. Okay, but wow, this is really cool. Can you run here? Nope. You can run down. Okay, so the only way to go is up. <clears throat> and ooh, okay the rose emblem shop and all that is here there's a camp here wow uh it's a bit more of a regular forest feel rather than the in the past it looked more mysterious and magical now it just looks more like a very ordinary forest camp uh, I do like the artwork though, but I prefer that they kept that air of uh, magic and mystery around Sulan Eskar. It sort of felt like it was uh, lost with this new one. Like it, it just looks like an ordinary forest. It doesn't look like mysterious and magical, which I think should be because this is after all the home of the uh, Wind Elves. I think they are Wind Elves. Yep. Okay, so these are the quests. Let's go up here. Okay. Uh, Mrita is here. New quest. Okay. So you can visit Kara from there. Let's go up here. Oh, okay. So there's no more of that walking, uh, running along that super long bridge anymore. It's just uh, one straight way up through this. Uh, I think they call it a wind elevator, which is really, really cool. Okay, can you go up by this way? Oh, you can. Fly up. Okay, so it's the same thing. Okay, so it's now way more convenient to access Kara as compared to running one big round. Oh, okay, this is new. Quest. Oh, they have some of the, they shifted the quest some of the quests around as well, I think. Okay, so the long the long ass bridge is actually here. What do you have here? It looks like they could be selling potions here in the future. Who knows? Those look like them the wings are getting in the way looks like health and mana potions maybe this could be another place whereby they could sell the five potions apart from the uh the the place where the golden hand is i forgot where that was the forum yeah i think that that was what it's called okay let's walk all the way up here let's see what we have oh oh you can actually come out from here as well oh i i like the wind elevator shortcut though it's really convenient in this place yep it goes down Okay, interesting, interesting. So, all in all, really nice. Let's see. Any more places we haven't explored? That's about it. Yeah. Uh, it's more of a town area now. Uh, with this added in and with the other part added in. It looks more like a proper town rather than the, what it was uh, in the past. With this potion brewing place and all that. So, good stuff. But like I said... I prefer it to have a little bit more of the air of uh, mystery and magic which I felt that it was kind of lost with this new uh, artwork. That being said, I still do think, I still do really like this new artwork and uh, I think it they done a very good job with it. I, I'm especially pleased with this wind elevator. I think it's really cool. You can see the animations uh, moving there and then you can just go fly all the way up to here and it's really convenient. You can go up here to Kara straight away or you can go down here. Uh, if you want to go somewhere else so all in all i like this uh, update definitely but you know this is just one small part of today's update let us look at the other part which is the guardian and pyromancer revamp now uh let's look through the guardian revamp uh guardian has a new passive ability servant of the avatars whenever you use an element lock guardian skill does not include trinket skills or weapon specials your next basic attack will receive 75 percent damage and 50 bonus as well as inheriting the element of the empowering attack 
Uh, this is a bit weird for me because it means in between using your normal skills, if you want to maximize your damage, you're going to have to use a regular attack, which feels kind of weird. I don't really know. Like, there aren't many classes which actually make use of the regular attack button. Maybe classes that uh, use MP through the regular attack, like Ranger, or maybe classes that uh, are based around the regular attack. The only one that I can think of is actually Archivist. So, all the other classes, you'll generally be using skills 99.99% of the time and not really using uh, the regular attack. So, maybe they are turn shifting Guardian towards that direction, but that being said, uh, I think Verli has stated that they want Guardian to be a sort of a fun class, not really a serious class. I, I don't really know, but you know, I think Guardian is still not up there in terms of power level, but I think it's uh, moving towards the right direction. I don't think every class in this, every single class in this game needs to be good at bossing because the thing is most people or players just tend to throw a new revamp class at the in challenges and uh, decide from there whether they are actually good or not based off the fact that whether or not they can do some of the in challenges I think that a class is not just about its bossing abilities there's also questing involved there's also uh, warring involved and there's also your uh, artwork if that's a thing for some of you people so yeah and I will not actually be doing any uh, testing for Guardian because believe it or not I actually do not have a verified Guardian account on this character okay some of you guys might be saying what happened uh, don't you have a Guardian as well for the viewers of my battle on content okay uh, fact of the matter is I actually use that Guardian account to verify another uh, Dragon Faber account and I no longer have access to that account I forgot completely forgot the login details already it was another account I think I only got it up to like level 20 something but back then it was a big deal already I managed to get a doom weapon on that account then afterwards I didn't play that account anymore so I can't really remember the email or any of the login details that was like uh, I think it was close to 10 years ago yeah it was more than 10 years ago since I had that so I actually used the Guardian account to verify that account instead of this one so this one actually does not have the Guardian uh, armor unlocked and I also do not feel like spending another 20 bucks on a Guardian character just to unlock the Guardian class in Dragon Faber at least uh, maybe if they make the class make the Guardian class uh, pretty strong then I would consider that that but for now uh, I don't have any plans on spending $20 on another Guardian just to uh, you know get the Guardian class inside of Dragon Fable so bunch of other changes Guardian Dragon now empowers with the Bacon element 4 has greater than 50% max HP you gain bonus critical chance okay 4 has less than 50% max HP applies 50 health resist for 2 turns uh, I'm not sure how much critical chance this is but it's i believe it's just for that skill itself so it's not a thing whereby uh you get fifth you get extra critical chance for a few turns so uh i think it's okay it's not really super strong or super broken now that being said you don't need every skill to be super strong or super broken and you definitely don't need every class to be super strong or super broken so maybe that's just me i don't know guardian rage now seeks weakness instead of using a random element uh, i really really like this change i think this is a perfect change to the guardian rage skill uh, it doesn't really need a damage boost or a cooldown reduction uh, but the element seeking makes it uh, very useful now so i like this change guardian dragon i'm feeling a bit meh about the change but guardian rage i like that change health drain now empowers with water damage increased by 50 percent cooldown reduced to seven from nine okay i think this is uh, pretty good uh, change as well increased damage not gonna complain and uh, cooldown reduction definitely good as well so you can heal a little bit more mana drain now empowers with ice damage increased by 50% now takes HP instead of MP although it still recovers MP okay so this is uh, another good change as well I definitely like that because attacking MP in dragon favor is pretty much useless I mean if you really want to drain an opponent's MP just use technomancer which can just uh, no wait technomancer can't do that anymore yeah okay anyways uh draining mp is basically useless now so uh there's no point in mana based attacks in my opinion doom knight still has one and i know the blaze base classes still have uh the attacks that attack your mp but 
I don't really see what's the point of attacking a monster's MP in Dragon Fable or draining his MP at all. So it's sort of, to me, it's sort of an area inside of the game whereby it's pretty pointless. Like, monster's MP, it's a pointless thing. Like, uh, I think for lower levels, maybe some of you might want to drain the MP of Ming's fairies so they can't full heal if you're not doing enough damage to out damage them. But in my opinion, uh, I still think it's just better to out damage the Ming's fairies rather than try to you know, uh, drain their MP, which is a very long and tiresome process. So, yeah, there's that. Next, Ray of Light and Powers with Light. Bonus, in minus bonus increase to minus 75, up from minus 50. Duration of effect reduced to 2 turns. Okay, this is definitely uh, much better because I think uh, minus 75 bonus is way better than minus 50 bonus, especially with the a lot of the monsters nowadays, okay, having high BTH. Guardian Shield Avoidance buff increased to 180 up from 125. Uh, this is this has been updated to newer standards uh, for 180, so that's that's a good change. Breath of Limb Crack uh, and Powers with Fire dot damage increased to 75% base damage up from 50%. Okay, I think I'll turn off the Sulan Eska music first. Okay. Uh, this is uh, very good. It makes the dot way more useful. 75% uh, base damage way better than 50%. Definitely. Damage boost, but uh, nothing really changed in terms of uh, its skill mechanics. Mega Shock and Power to Energy cooldown reduced to one turn from four. Mega Shock is the multi skill, I believe. So this is a good change because there is literally uh, no reason to have a long cooldown on a basic multi skill. Keen Edge cooldown reduced to eight from twelve. This one, I believe, it increases your crit. Okay, so I think it's quite nice that they reduce the cooldown by four turns. Guardian Heroes and Powers with Darkness, but no other changes for the skills. This one crits with Darkness, I believe. Decay. So they changed Night Bane's Fury. Uh, it now empowers with Nature. Now applies Decay. A minus 25. Wait, no. This one, what does this skill used to do? I cannot remember. <coughs> no, this isn't a one hit kill. Okay, but anyway. Uh, minus 25 or plus 25 health debuff for 3 turns. Uh, this skill I'm feeling a bit eh, I think it's not that great. Maybe make it 5 turns or give it uh, higher numbers like maybe not 25, maybe make it 30, 40 maybe for 3 turns or you know just increase the duration to 5 turns or something like that. This skill I don't really see it being used a whole lot except maybe to buff up your damage a little bit but you know I think it's not such a great skill. Vortex and Powers of Wind now does 2 hits of 75% base damage along with previous effects. Okay that's nice. I can't remember what the previous effect is, but uh, I believe it's a damage buff, so that's good. Author's power now does 500% base damage even to specific foes that resist it. Cooldown reduced to 7 down from 15. So previously for foes that resist it, you'll deal 300% damage, so you're getting a 200% damage buff to this skill. Okay, and they cut the cooldown in half, which is uh, really really nice. So. Uh, these are the Guardian changes to note. We are aware of some issues with his art animations and his weapon special animation. Unfortunately, these aren't quite able to be fixed this week. Okay, I think this probably won't be the final changes. There's still a lot of uh, feedback going back and forth between Verly and uh, people on the Discord. So if you'd like to uh, give your feedback as well and make your voice heard, then do hit, do go ahead and join the unofficial Dragon Faber Discord. Verly will be there discussing the class. Um, and can give your ideas on how you want this uh, class to be further changed. I don't think these will be the final changes. There'll probably still be a few more tweaks. So yeah. Finally, Pyro rework changes. Powermancer was in a fairly decent spot before. No, it was not. It's a pretty garbage class before. <laughs> okay, but I lack some power. With the stat rewards, it was also odd that it benefited more from dexterity rather than intelligence. These changes hope to address that. Okay, so that's good. Now Pyromancer has a Mage Fire passive. Okay, when you start a battle, you have the Healing Mage Fire buff on yourself that will heal you for 0.75% of your HP each turn. This is a uh, completely negligible amount. For my Endurance, I have like... Let's see here. Uh, 80 plus 71, 151 Endurance. It's healing me like what, 18 HP per round, something like that. Uh, completely useless in my opinion. So maybe make the buff the heal a bit more significant, maybe not 0.75%, 2% would be nice, like you don't need it to be overpowered obviously, but 0.75% isn't going to do anything obviously. Uh, however, a pyromancer controls fire, and can you, so if you use the basic attack button, your mage power will become 
consuming mage fire so you can use your uh, basic attack button to toggle this back and forth okay so consuming mage fire uh, increases your critical hit chance of pyromancer skills by 15% per pyromancer dot on your foe so this is actually huge so up to a maximum of 60% crit chance so if you have four dots on your foe you will uh, be able to get extra 60% critical hit chance which is absolutely uh, insane Alright, so uh, I think you almost always want to use the attack button to make it uh, switch, uh, shift over to consuming mage fire. I think there's no real reason to use the healing mage fire because 0.75% of your HP, like I mentioned earlier, is not going to help at all. Conflagration. Okay, uh, now Pyromancer has all of its skills locked to the fire element, okay? But uh, you can use this skill as a toggle to suffer minus 10 all resistance debuff uh, it will increase your healing by 10% so you can use that in conjunction with the mage fire passive though I have no, no I don't really understand why you want to do that because it's still a pathetic amount so yeah you can uh, click on this skill to toggle your pyromancer skills to use your weapons element instead of the fire element this is only good for monsters with uh, fire resist for monsters without fire resist it's better to just conserve a turn and use uh, the normal fire element or if the monster is weak to another element then you want to consider using a uh, using the conflagration skill to up your damage this i would say it's more useful in boss fights for uh, normal questing and against regular monsters uh, wasting a turn just to shift your element isn't uh, useful at all in my opinion because for other classes you can just do that by switching your weapon I think it will be good if this was a quick cast instead of a regular instead of consuming one turn that will make it a whole lot more useful so yeah and on top of that you also have a cooldown so not really that uh, useful of a skill in my opinion and each time you use this you'll recover a small amount of HP and MP uh, a neat little thing I guess so you're, it's not just about switching the element it, you also, you're also getting a small heal but the heal uh, I've seen it it's quite negligible so yeah Try flame now no longer applies a one turn stun okay now applies a dot effect it's just uh, it's the same as all your other dots uh, it's a five turn dot and with these changes Pyromancer is now very potent with intelligence being able to burst foes into flame with critical hits as well as being able to survive the harshest attempts to blow it out okay as with all reworks and balance changes feedback is important blah 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 so yeah now let us showcase the pyromancer armor which is something that i actually have the rest of the stuff uh the guardian armor i actually do not have yet there are also a few changes that they did not uh mention inside of the design notes so i will go through those changes i don't know why verly didn't put it there uh is it meant as an easter egg or if it or is it just uh, cause they want us to find out on our own I don't really know so yeah okay I'm just going to equip a random weapon I'm not going to bother equipping everything so this isn't power man says it's full power but I'm just going to uh, show you guys what else it's capable of okay so everything is now locked to fire and you want to click this obviously because like I said the heal is completely negligible okay so some other changes that they did not actually uh, put in the design notes fire chains it used to inflict minus 40 bonus now it's minus 75 bonus so that's uh way better because minus 40 bonus is pretty useless in my opinion okay so that's one change that they didn't bring up uh Melcifer. so instead of uh, reducing your foe's fire resistance by 25 percent it now reduces all resistance by 25 percent which is really way better and it's way more useful so it's not just fire now it's uh all resistance which is really really good okay what other things did they change here <coughs> uh yeah that's basically it okay uh melcifer also heals a bit of your hp and mp okay unfortunately i don't know if that was the case previously because from all of the recorded data that i have about uh pyromancer both on the official battle on forums and through the dragon favor endgame wiki none of it actually mentioned that melcifer heals so i don't know if melcifer used to heal in the past because obviously i did not use melcifer but some people have stated that uh, this was already a thing in the past so uh, melcifer used to heal in the past also so i don't think that was a change that they made to it now enkinder skill this skill is pretty useless 25 percent damage for five turns why will you use this skill when melcifer also gives you 25 percent damage for five turns 
like it's a completely useless skill unless you just wanna stack your damage but other than that I don't think it should be used because yeah there's really no point in using that when you can gain when you can uh when Melcifer is just a way better version as compared to Enkindle. I think Enkindle should be reworked, maybe give it a larger damage boost uh so that you have some use over Melcifer, right? Now rebirth, uh they say it's on a 10 turn cooldown okay since the start this hasn't changed but on top of that 10 turn cooldown you uh, also have a 35 turn cooldown after 34 turn cooldown sorry after you use the skill but it does not carry over between battles it used to carry over between battles but now it doesn't I don't know uh, if this is a bug or this is intended but you know the 10 turn cooldown First of all, if you go into a battle, you'll start with a 10 turn cooldown. Doesn't matter even if you finish the cooldown for this battle, you jump right into the next battle, you start the 10 turn cooldown all over again. Okay? And after you use this skill, okay, uh, it's supposed to have a 35 or 34 turn cooldown. Let's take a look here. So 34 turn cooldown, it says it's supposed to carry over between battles, at least from all of the data that I've seen. But it doesn't. It resets to a 10 turn cooldown and I will show you guys okay so we'll just do this blaze blue i think needs a little bit of a buff as well it just reduces your enemies uh bonus no not bonus it's a bonus uh minus 25 to their damage to their boost by 25 percent i think that's pretty weak okay uh maybe it could give it a stronger reduction in fact maybe 30 or 40 percent reduction to the boost that'll be pretty good okay so let's go inside here again and i'll show you what i mean you see that 35 turn or 34 turn cooldown has been reset back down to 9 turns so rebuffs 35 uh 34 turn cooldown is only only applies to that battle alone you jump into a second battle you'll start over with the 9 turn cooldown which i think uh it's really good i don't really my guess is is that it's not intended because it doesn't really make sense but uh for a single battle i think it's uh like for questing, I think this is quite overpowered because you can just, you know, drag out the battle for 10 turns and then use that uh, skill again to fully heal up your character. So for questing, this is really good. You can drag out the battle to 10 turns if you so wish and then you can uh, use that skill to fully heal your character. But against boss fights, I think it's pretty useless because uh, like it's good for a one-time use. Like you probably won't be using it more than one time in a single fight because there will be like close to 70 turns and I don't think any fight lasts that long even for boss fights like I don't really think they last up to 70 turns so there is that so yeah good for one time emergency use but other than that uh, it's also good for questing in that you can uh, drag out the battle for 10 turns and then just fully heal yourself uh, especially good for quests like let me see the labyrinth uh, the time torn labyrinth inside of the inn at the age of time and it also be good for quests like the uh, never ending blades okay so these are two quests which i can see coming into handy room uh 100 rooms of fiery doom i think it could be useful as well though that's nearly that's not a big maze compared to the tantor matrix or the never glitch so yeah all in all i like the changes i like that uh the class is getting a buff but there are some skills that definitely still needs a little bit more buffing to make it useful and another thing i like to bring up is Powermancer essentially has a uh has four skills that does the same thing okay so you have four skills that in inflicts a dot a 50 percent dot i think it's all the same four five turns like maybe you wanna like i know Powermancer is built around uh dots on the enemy but maybe you want to change some of the skills make it a bit more unique maybe make some dots a bit stronger so that uh there is like it differentiates the dots you know apart from just the animation and the name because everything does the uh all four of these skills does the exact same thing now and for a class with four skills that does the same thing uh you know i'm just a bit eh on it but yeah so hopefully there will be uh more changes coming to power Mancer and i will probably cover them when they come out so that's it for this video hope you guys have enjoyed if you have be sure to give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more such future content till the next time i'm your host carbon gaming peace out